Hey everybody, it's Steve, and today I'm back with another big brand new project. So, today I have my fence banging zombie. Uh, I actually saw something similar to this uh, at Spirit Halloween, I think, last year or the year before. And I had to have it, but I didn't want to spend how much money it has. So, this guy probably cost me around 75 bucks, uh, parts included. So, I always love making my large scale animated props closer to Halloween, so I think. Middle September is uh, a good time for that, it's just because I have room in the garage right now, and I'm going to show you how I made him. So, let's get started. Alright everyone, we are going to get into this build. So I started off with a scrap piece of plywood left over from my sewer wall build, and then I just made a square out of PVC fittings. So a couple T's, a couple elbows, um, with a T poking up through the middle, and that's going to act as our base for our zombie uh, for this project. So then I drilled some pilot holes in the corners, and then I'm just drilling uh, some screws into all four corners to keep it down. Just make sure they don't poke through the bottom Because that's annoying and then I'm just screwing together all the places where it might twist to hold it together And now I'm making the frame for our fence piece So I used one inch PVC for this and half inch PVC for the base for our zombie friend And then once I had it perfectly square I went in with the drill and locked in all the corners so that it wouldn't twist and then I put a really long piece of uh, half inch PVC in our base and that is going to be the support structure for our zombie So I'm just cutting it down right around where his hip should be and I'm going to attach a four-way fitting with some PVC sticking out of the sides and then I'm just going to screw it together so it doesn't move and I'm going to take some pipe insulation and I'm just going to attach it to both of the pieces and wrap it around the front to form like a waist so that the pants don't slide off and it gives it some dimension so it looks like it's full and not just clothes hanging from a piece of PVC. And the costume that I used I got from Spirit Halloween when they had their clearance sale back in the spring. So I'm using this zombie right here, the skeleton zombie. I liked it because it had hands and uh, the type of mask that covers the whole face so that'll be perfect. So I'm just going to pop the pants on our hips and I cut a slit in the back uh, so I can zip tie it together. And then I'm going to put a piece of PVC back in that fitting. And do the same thing for the shoulders, so I'm just going to attach a four-way fitting with some PVC and then more pipe insulation to make shoulders, and I'm just going to hang the shirt from that. I didn't move the camera up high enough for you to see me making this, so I'm just describing it to you, but it's the same as the hips, it's the same thing. So now I'm going to attach the head, so I'm just going to cut the remaining PVC that's sticking out of the shoulders down to size. And then the same way I make all of my other heads, I'm going to take a plastic shopping baggie and fill it with other plastic shopping baggies and then mold it into a head shape and then lock it in with some duct tape. I find this is a lot cheaper than foam heads and it's waterproof instead of using newspaper and I just like it a lot. It's easy and it works. So I'm just going to duct tape it into place and then I'm going to pop our mask right on top of there and it looks good. And it's got some dangly bits hanging out from the back so I just draped it over his shoulders. And now we're going to attach the fence to the base. I had tried using these metal straps, but they didn't work. So I went and got these uh, PVC conduit brackets uh, for like electrical conduit. And I'm going to use three of those. Um, they're one inch brackets. And I'm going to use uh, some screws just to hold it into place. And I tightened them, but I didn't tighten them all the way because I didn't want it to completely keep the fence from moving. Uh, so that ended up working perfect. Now I just want to warn you in case you decide to do this project for yourself. Working with chicken wire absolutely sucks. It is one of my least favorite things to do in the entire world because it's rolled up in a circle, it doesn't bend the way you want it to, you get poked a thousand times, you have to cut it a million times uh, if you want to cut it into separate pieces. I literally have to cut it like 40 times every time I want to make a new piece. Um, trying to measure it while it's like all rolled up in a roll is like a pain in the ass and I just, I don't like it. So there, that's my rant. But. Here we go, we're going to attach the chicken wire to make our piece of fence. So I just used zip ties to attach it around the sides. Um, I couldn't do the bottom because it was too close to the wood, but that ended up working fine. And then I took my second piece of chicken wire and I attached it on top of the first one. 
and I did it the same way. I just wrapped it around the sides a little bit and then used some zip ties to hold it in place. And then I went in and attached the two pieces of chicken wire together with some little baby zip ties in the middle just so it looked like one piece um, because they bend in different ways because chicken wire is terrible. And then I did the same thing for the top piece, just dropped around the sides, then attached them together in the middle, and then I trimmed off the top, and then I zip tied it to the top as well. And it came out looking really nice. Uh, I think it looks just like a piece of fence. I mean, it would probably have been easier to buy a section of chain link fence, but it would have been the same cost as this entire project, so I kind of wanted to save some money. But I try to avoid using chicken wire as much as possible because it is so irritating. And now we're going to make the arm. So I took my drill and I drilled a hole through the piece of PVC that is used to make his shoulders. And then I'm going to thread some zip ties through that. And the key to making the motion of the arms work is by making loose zip tie links. So you want to make like a chain of zip ties and just have them loosely connected. And then that way everything will just move freely. So I put that zip tie through the shoulder and then I'm going to thread a zip tie through a piece of pool noodle and then I'm just gonna let it hang there. See how loose it is? That's just so it can move freely. I'm gonna cut the noodle in half for the other arm, then I'm gonna cut it in half for the elbow, and then I'm gonna thread a zip tie through that piece where the elbow should be, and it actually threaded through pretty easily, just on its own, I didn't have to poke any holes. And then I'm just gonna attach those two pieces of noodle together, again, leaving the zip tie connections very loose so that they can move freely. And then I'm going to attach it to the fence as well. And I wanted to attach the hand onto the pool noodle from behind the fence so that it would poke through like he was grabbing the fence. So I just kind of all made it one piece. So that connection on the fence there is to attach the hands to the fence. And then it ends up looking like that. So then I put the zombie gloves on top of that and then they ended up hiding the whole thing. So I'm just going to put the sleeve over. It's going to be dark. I know you can see the arms through the sleeve. I should have painted it black, but it ended up not mattering at all. So then I'm just going to put the hand on, put the sleeve over the hand, and then use more zip ties just to secure it in place. And now our zombie is done. I did the same thing for the other arm. And then I went in with some metallic silver spray paint, and I spray painted the frame to look like metal. And then I used black spray paint for the wooden base, as well as the base of the zombie, and the pole that is... Uh, right there between his legs and then that's about it so I forgot to film while I was making it how I attached the motor so the motor has three wires coming out of it one's for power and then the other two are for speed so I use the green wire for slow speed the blue wire is for fast speed and then I have a large angle bracket there that I have attached with some screws for the motor and then the linkage goes all the way up to the middle of the fence there and I just have a large a bolt with a nut securing it in place. It's important to use lock nuts so that they don't unscrew themselves. Um, I had drilled a hole through this piece and the bolt goes through there just because it wasn't long enough to go through both pieces of the PVC entirely. And it ended up working out really well. The motion is really smooth. Uh, so yeah, and then I did the same thing at the bottom, just attach it with a bolt and a locking nut. And it worked out really well. So this is the finished prop motion. It comes out really smooth. It squeaks a lot because of the paint on the PVC uh, with those conduit brackets where the fence is attached to, but it actually doesn't bother me. I'm going to have some audio connected to this prop. I'll probably have a motion sensor hooked up to it too with some audio. I'll probably edit the audio into the video, but I haven't set all of that up yet, and I probably won't until the day before Halloween. So I'll make sure to include that in my haunt build video this year. But... I think it came out amazing. Uh, my parents were too terrified to come up the driveway when they came home that night, so I think it worked out well. So this guy's going to be at the entrance of my asylum uh, area in my haunted house this year, and I'm really excited to see how people react to him. Like all great props, he wasn't very hard to make, and I think he will get a very strong reaction just based on his appearance alone. So I'm, I'm pleased with how it came out, and I hope you guys are too. Hey Haunters, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, 
even hit the notification bell if you're into that kind of thing. If you don't like the video, don't tell me because it hurts my feelings. Okay, thanks.